the VC Circles, the Classroom Show. I'm Vaishnav Kapadia from ALMT Legal and I'm going to be talking about private limited companies. What is a private limited company? It is a company which, by its articles of association, limits the number of members to 50, restricts the rights of its members to transfer their shares, prohibits the invitation to the public to subscribe to the shares and debentures of the company, and prohibits invitation or acceptance of deposits from any person other than the members, directors or the relatives. The minimum number of shareholders for a private limited company are two and the minimum number of directors are, all, are, are two as well. The minimum authorized and paid up capital for a private limited company is Rs 100,000. Now I'm going to be talking about the incorporation process of a private limited company. The primary requirement for making application for a private limited company is a director's identification number and a digital signature certificate. Every person who intends to become the director of a company is required to have a unique director's identification number. In addition to this, the director is also required to obtain a digital signature certificate. This digital signature certificate is required to sign all the forms which have to be uploaded on the ROC website. And further, these, are, these digital signature certificates also have to be PAN-based or PAN-encrypted, which permits the director to sign the income tax returns digitally. The first form that is required to be filled up for making a name application is the Form 1A. In Form 1A, the applicant is required to give six options for the proposed name of the company in the order of priority. All of these names have to end with Private Limited. Further, these names should have some significance to the activities that the company intends to carry out. The name of the city in which the intended company is proposed to be set up should also be furnished here. In addition to this, the registered office address of the, com of the proposed company should also be given along with the proof that the company is permitted to set up its registered office address at those premises. Some of the valid proofs are a registered lease deed or alternatively, if the premises are owned by the director of a company, then the director should give a letter or maybe an authority to permit the company to set up its registered office address at those premises. If the premises are not owned by a director of the company, then the person permitting the company to set up its registered office address at those premises is required to give a letter or a documenting evidencing the same. Whilst the applicant is awaiting the name approval under Form 1A, one can start drafting the Memorandum of Association and the Articles of Association of the company. The Memorandum of Association of a Company is the charter document which will set out the objects of the company and the activities that it would carry out. The Articles of Association governs the internal management and the administration of the company and the manner in which the company would operate. Once the name is approved, one is required to file Form 1, 18 and 32. Form 1 is the declaration for setting up or incorporating a company. Form 18 is for situation of the registered office of the company and Form 32 is for appointment of the first directors of the company. While you are filing these forms, the memorandum and articles of the association of the company are also required to be uploaded. These are first required to be stamped electronically and thereafter required to be signed by the first subscribers to the memorandum or the first shareholders of the company before a witness. Once this is done, these are required to be uploaded electronically. Thereafter, once the Registrar of Companies has approved all the documents that have been filed, the Certificate of Incorporation of the Private Limited Company will be furnished electronically. This is when the company is really set to be born. Now we'll talk about foreign investment in a company. In case there is foreign investment in the company, one needs to consider the entry route. The entry route through, could be through an automatic route or a government approval route. In case through an automatic route, one does, does not require to take any sort of approval. However, under the government route, an approval is required from the Foreign Investment Promotion Board. Further, one needs to also consider the sectoral caps which may be applicable to a particular sector. One needs to also consider 
the regulations and the conditions that may be laid down by a sector specific regulation uh, regulator such as the IRDA. The next thing that one needs to consider is the instrument that can be issued to a foreign investor. The only instruments that can be issued are equity shares, fully and compulsorily convertible preference shares, and fully and compulsorily convertible debentures. Any other instrument could be considered as a debt. These equity instruments have to be issued within 180 days of receiving the foreign inward remittance from the non-resident investor or debit to the account of the foreign investor. In case the instruments are not issued within 180 days, then this amount has to be refunded to the non-resident investor. The reporting requirement is that the Indian company is required to file a form FCGPR with an authorized dealer along with a foreign inward remittance certificate which is issued by the local bank and also a know your customer certificate which is issued by the bank remitting the amount from the foreign investor's account to India. Some of the changes that are brought about by the company's bill of 2012 are that the number of shareholders for a private limited company has been increased from 50 to 200. A new concept of a one-person company is to be introduced. This one-person company will be incorporated as a private limited company. Further, the first AGM, which is earlier required to be held within 18 months of the date of incorporation, will now have to be held within nine months of the financial closure of the company. One of the privileges that a company, private limited company had was that it could file its balance sheet and pre &L account separately. This benefit has now been withdrawn pursuant to the company's bill of 2012. Earlier, a, a person could be a director in as many private companies as he wanted and he could only be a director in 15 public limited companies. Now, that has changed with the company's bill. The company's bill provides that a person can be a director in a maximum of 20 companies out of which a maximum of 10 companies can be public limited. This threshold of 20 includes public as well as private companies. This wraps up our episode on incorporation of a private limited company. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.